What's up, guys? Uh, it's RJ Hampton here with my guy Tyrese Maxey, Dallas' own uh, on the Young Person Basketball Podcast, man. Tyrese, how you how you been, bro? Man, smooth, man. Life is great. No complaints, honestly. Uh, yeah. Just blessed, really. Nah, for sure. So for people who don't know, you're from Dallas. I'm from Dallas. We grew up together. Talk about that a little bit uh, as far as when we met, how we met, and just your impression of me and vice versa. Yeah, you know, it's crazy because I was explaining to somebody the other day. They were like, uh, who do you know from, like, your first years of AAU that, that's right. made to the league? Nah, and I facts. was like, I only know Art. That's the only person I could think of, yeah. right? especially from Dallas. And it's just like, first thing that always pops into my head is us playing against each other at St. Phillips. St. Phillips. And uh, <laughs> to, to bring this up, your pops, we laugh about it all the time, my family. Uh, he brings somebody in the game, do the tip-off, and they come in walking all slow. He's like, no, nah, you ain't ready. You ain't ready. You yeah, nah. Give me somebody else. Give me somebody else. <laughs> and uh, we just laugh about it all the time, man. It's just, it's good times, man. It's good times, really. Sick. Nah, we was in, we, we had to be first grade. Seriously. Like, like that, that's the first recollection of anybody I played AAU against yeah. that I know was yeah. you. Um, so, you know, that was a good experience. And then I feel like, obviously, growing up um, throughout AAU, throughout high school, we played each other a lot of times. Uh, what is, like, the Dallas basketball scene mean to you as far as, like, us growing up there and, like, the players that, we know from there and came yeah. out of there. It means a lot, man. It means a lot. It was, uh, I'll say this, it was extremely competitive. Right. But it felt like we all had, like, a certain level of respect for each other. Like, for sure. we was, we wasn't homies, but, like, you know, yeah. we would say what's up to each other whenever right. it is. You know, we'd hit each other up on the ground. We'd hit each other up and, you know, hang yeah. out. But it was, like, it was a certain level of respect that we have for yeah. one another. And uh, I think that respect just carried on. It really carried yeah. on. And, um. You know, you just got to appreciate what all we've done. Like, so many different paths. Right. Like, the pathway you took, you know, the yeah. pathway I took. And uh, to, for us to be able to get on the same level, at the highest right. level, and meet each other at that, it's, like, it's special, man. I mean, we still have, like, guys that are from Dallas, like, the top players yeah. in college. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, Jalen, Drew, Drew. Max. Yeah, Max. Yeah. Like, these dudes are, like, really, like, I'm proud of them for sure. Yeah, sure. Um, and, you know, your dad was, is, you know, a nice basketball player. Mine was, too, like – and they both trained us, coached right, us. Right. Like, how was that growing up as, like, your dad as your coach and how to differentiate, differentiate like, pops and coach and coach and pops? Because I know I had a hard time. You know I did. Yeah, I, we were probably in the same boat. Right. Like, literally. Like, uh, both of our pops were, you know, they were on us hard. You know, they wanted the best for us. Right. But, honestly, I think it was the best things for us because, you know, my I know my dad, he was extremely tough on me. I, I can remember from all the way back coming home from New Orleans, you know, like the Super 60 yeah. or whatever it was called. Memorial Day tournament, I was in fourth grade, and we get home, and they always, my mom would always film the games, and we watching film, like, as we get home, right. like, I'm a fourth grade, like, man, I don't yeah. want to go play I don't 2K play video bad, games. man, you talking about something, we come to the meeting room to watch film, but as I look back on it, like, now, as much film as I watch and as much, uh, as, much as I put into the game, right. you can't do nothing but appreciate them for it, you right. know what I'm saying? Nah, uh, for sure, I, that's with me, my daddy just cussed me out on the way back the whole time, <laughs> I was just be upset. Um, like but as that. as I know, you got three sisters. Yep. Um, so how was that growing up in a house full of sisters? Like, especially when like you yeah. just you got your mom, you got three sisters, and you and your pops. How was that growing up? See, the crazy part about it is a lot of people don't know it's a house full of women. Like, it was me and my pops, and then it was both of my grandmothers lived with me. Okay. And then my sister, my Bobby, all of my sisters lived with me. my one of my sisters was on and off, of course. Then my mom, and then the funny thing is, my my oldest sister goes off and she has twins uh twin daughters so yeah, my twin nieces. Yeah, your nieces and then they bring in more you know you know females and then but it was great though it was great i think it um it really taught me how to treat you know women the right way and then sure. that was that was a blessing in disguise and um i really do appreciate all the women that are around me right uh now let's transition into like how your path once you got out of like high school um in kentucky uh who was your host on your visit at kentucky and tell me some some stories about that visit Ooh. I think my first visit to Kentucky, my host was, uh, I think it was P.J. Washington. P.J. P.J. Washington. Another Dallas kid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Another Dallas kid. It was P.J. Washington. And um, it was crazy, man. I didn't, I didn't have much, uh, I didn't need much convincing to go to Kentucky, right. to be honest. I was, uh, I was one that ever since John Wall and De'Aaron Fox, all right. those guys went through there, I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be a part of that legacy. I wanted to be a part of. Uh, that brotherhood that they had, yeah. and then you know, Coach Cal was getting them in the league. No, now, of facts. course, they was getting themselves in the league because the work that was put in. But yeah. I wanted to play for a coach like Coach Cal, who right. challenged me and pushed me. So when I got to the league, um, 
I was ready for anything that was thrown at me. Right. And I feel like it really prepared me. Yeah. So uh, top five Kentucky players of all time. You have to pick a starting five. You can include yourself, too. All time or Cal's era? Cal era. Cal, Cal era. era? Cal era. Anthony Davis has to be up there for sure. They eight won a natty. Eight five. Yeah, they won a natty. I'm going to put John Wall. He got to be the one. You know, it's funny because, like, we're talking about while they're in college, I may throw Tyler Eulis in there just because mm. of, like, mm. he's, like, loved yeah. in Kentucky. Like, he's back there now, he's right? He's back there still coaching. Yeah. And he's, like, he's like an icon, right? Yeah. They love him. They still had a the picture of him when he got hit. I think it was in the Louisville game. Yeah. He got blood coming down his eye. And, like, they called him the, the Cardinal Killer. So it's like, yeah. if you do anything against, you know, Louisville and they love you. So I have them. I have those three. Now it gets it gets. It's I'm gonna I'm gonna throw D Book in there book. as my three because D Book was special because he came off the bench. Yeah, and, and he didn't even dribble that thing. So I'm saying he was just shooting. He was shooting. And shooting. Like, he played his role. He didn't he didn't care, man. Right. He didn't um he didn't fight with Coach Cal. He didn't you know he didn't argue. He played his role and he was still very successful. Right. So I got D Book and I'm a, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna move. AD to the four, and I'm going to throw DeMarcus in there oh, at the five just because, you know, the big dog got to be in there. That's the big a, dog got to be in there. All-time Duke or all-time KU. I mean, uh, Kentucky, uh, what you just said, I might have to go Kentucky. Hey, and, and then, look, you got De'Aaron Fox off the bench, Jamal Murray. Oh, my then God. Then it start, you know what I mean? It gets spooky. Man. It get real spooky. Right. So now you're in the league. When you go back to Dallas, how many tickets you got to get? Because I know I got to get. I know, I, my family just try to get a suite sometimes. They just try to get a suite. Man, I gave up on counting tickets, man. I just, I try, to, I try to take care of as many people as I can. Right. You know what I mean? You know how it goes. And uh, us being on the East, we only go once. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we only go once. And I Facts. missed the Houston trip this year. Ah. So it's like everybody's going to try to cram me and die. So I'm probably going to have to get at least 20, 25 tickets. Yeah. And then we'll figure it out from there. My, my, people, like, the people like my uncle and them, they're going to get left out because they, they come see me play all the time. Yeah, so. right. They'll probably get left out. You transitioning into an Eagles fan? I hope not. Absolutely not. I okay. Can't do that. I, that, oh, I'm a, they're, they're you scared place. me. No, yeah. no, no. Okay. They're, yeah. they're second, though. They're, you know, they're second yeah, because nah. I'm, I'm, I play here. But like, I like the Eagles. Like I, I'm a Cowboys fan, of, yeah. of course, but like I think the Eagles are a good football team. They're, great. Hey, they're, solid. they're a really good football team. They're a solid football team for sure. They I think uh, I think Jalen Hurst is nice. So I seen you at the – I seen a picture. Somebody had posted you at the, the uh, playoff game that yep. just happened. Yep. It was you, me. Yeah, baby, <laughs> all, everybody in this, Kevin Hart. Yeah. Uh, how is it, you know, being around those guys? Uh, I know it's like a lot of people, um, even in the NBA, don't even get, you know, to be around those type of guys. Yeah. So, like, what's that like, you know, being in Philly and, and having those guys around in Philly? It's the market, man. The market and the city and the, you know, the brotherly love thing. It's, it's real here. Right. It's, you know, it's a legitimate thing. Like, uh, it's not it's not fake. And um, James coming in and the big fella – those those are like marquee guys, right. so like the spotlight is always on, yeah. and uh, you know it's a blessing. It's a blessing that you can be able to play on on that type of level on every single night. Like you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna get the team's best shot because you have those guys and you have that 100%. type of talent. Yeah. But uh, it's cool to meet those people, man. You, you know, you just meet them and you really just pick their brain, man. Like, right. think about like Lil Baby, Meek Mill, Kevin Hart. That's crazy. These are like the top of the top of their craft. Right. Like, you know, you, you play with James and them, but you mean people in, in other professions. And see how their brain yeah, works, see how man, they how they go to go to work every day. Yeah, it's nah. crazy. Then they teach you like certain like things to help you like with your career and then like your post career. And like right. that's one thing that I really appreciate being here. It's like the connection that I've made since I've been here. Right. Uh, the connection that my uncle and my mom, my dad have made, you know, that, that can set you up for, you know, the post career. That's what I really appreciate about nah, this. No, no, that's that's nice. And then, you know, obviously speaking on Joel and, you know, James, uh, how is that playing with, you know, two of the, the greatest players ever played? You know, I was drafted, I played with Nikola Jokic and even in that time playing with him, it's just yeah. like he taught me so much in that amount of time that yeah. like I'll take on forever in my career. So just just speak on that. Like, how is it playing with them every single night and them having your back? Like, cause it's almost like a, a big brother, little brother thing. Yeah. Like, they really take you under uh, under their wing. Yeah, I'll say this, man. It's funny because Joel was probably one of the first, you know, players and, like, people in our organization that really believed in me. Right. Like, uh, I just remember him telling me, like, after, like, the first or second game, uh, of my rookie year, me yeah. not playing as much. He was like, you know, you're going to be special. You're going to, like, I, I believe in you. I believe in, like, don't don't ever feel like you're worried. Don't, ever, don't worry about anything. 
And, uh, you know, I just really appreciate him for that because yeah. when the big dog is like, and when he yeah. when he got you under his wing, it's like your confidence goes to another oh, level. Hundred percent. And of course, you know you a worker, so like you gain your own confidence. But right. when you have a confidence from somebody like him, yeah, I mean it just it skyrockets. Then to speak on James, like you know a lot of people you know were in my area when he got here was you know were telling me like don't worry you'll be all right you'll be fine. But right. like I think I know my game took off to another level when he got here just because. Right. He took me under his wing, and he's taught me so many things. He taught me so much in a small, you know, time period. And right. he just, he's like, a, like you say, a big brother to me, man. Not on yeah. and off the court, he's showing me how to move off the court, showing me how to like, you know, get myself ready for the post career. And then yeah. on the court, showing me, you know, how he draws fouls and how he does different yeah. things like that. And uh, you've been drawing a lot of fouls this year. I've been keeping up. Man, I, I'm, try, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm falling behind them. It's hard to get foul calls when they, you know, they nah, do. Nah, facts. But uh, but uh, it, it's, it's fun though, man. It's fun to learn from uh, two guys like that who who are special, like you said, they're, they're future Hall of Famers. So, Philly on the way to the Eagles on the way to the uh to the Super Bowl. The Phillies Philly. were in the World Series. What's it looking like for the Sixers this year? What you, what you, what, yeah. What's your predictions? Yeah, man. It's funny. We were just talking about that. My mom called me. She said, all the pressure on y'all now. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, the Phillies went. The Union, the soccer team, they went. Oh, I didn't even see. I didn't even yeah, know that. Yeah, they went, and now the Eagles are, are in there. So it's like, uh, yeah, they, they you know they, they going to take a little couple pressure off us for the next two weeks. But yeah. once that, the win, lose, or draw, you know, they made it to the highest game. Yeah. So now the, all the spotlight is going to be on us. And uh no, I feel like we have the pieces for sure. We have the pieces, yeah. and I feel like getting a full training camp in a full year with uh, with JH is really going to help us. Like last yeah. year, we only played like 22 or 23 games Together. with him before the playoffs, and yeah. that's like you can't really practice. You know how that is. Yeah. You can't really practice can't as practice much because you're playing every other day, and then once the playoffs come, you want everybody to be healthy. Yeah. So you don't want to go out there and practice extremely hard. So getting a full training camp in a full year uh, of James Harden who uh, you know, he has the ball a lot, you know. He's, right. That's somebody who's gonna uh, be in control during, during the playoffs. So it's gonna be great, you know. Yeah. I think we have a chance. I think we have a chance. I think everybody has kind of bought into the roles. The roles have shifted, um, and everybody's stepping in the right direction. Right. And because everybody's stepping in the right direction, um, the sky's the limit. I think. No nah, facts, and just going off that, you know, your rookie year. Um, did you have any, you know, rookie hazing or rookie pranks like that that Joel did? Like I know he's a big kid. Yeah, but so you know, it's funny because or like, like carry the bags to the yeah. to the hotel stuff like that. Yeah, it, it's funny. I know uh, I got like three quick stories. First one was uh, Joel had this bag. You know how you can put your bag underneath the plane. Yeah, Joel had this bag that he you know, he wanted his bag on on the plane. It was right. like we go on a nine ten day road trip and the bag weighed like two hundred pounds, <laughs> and I got to carry it up the stairs going like I'm like Indianapolis, Minnesota. Them stairs is crazy you know too. Getting on it's, the plane, it's freezing cold. It's snowing outside, and the bag weighs more than me. Yeah. So I'm, like, trying to walk up the stairs. I'm slipping and falling, and I had that. You know, I had to get donuts on, you know, on shoot-around days. Yeah. But it wasn't as bad, man. It, was, it wasn't that bad. I was the only rookie, though. That was the thing. Like, ah, uh, okay. Paul Reed and, and Isaiah Joe had kind of went to – that was in and out the G League. Yeah. So I was the only rookie. I was relied on anything, like, anything. Like, the vest that we had in that year was Danny Green, Dwight Howard, oh, yeah. uh, Mike Scott. So I had real vets. Yeah, yeah, I you had real, real vets. So they, they, you know, but they took me under wing, man. They took care of me. They was, you know, they, they were proud of me, and I really do appreciate them. No, nah, that I is the best though. When you got those real yeah. vets, like when I was in Denver, I had Will Barton, yeah. I had Nicola, I had you know even Gary here now right, right, still. Right. So like, they they mess with you, but like at the end of the day, they are gonna take care of you. Yeah, like yeah. Nicola would send me to the grocery store like, two a.m. But like yeah. I buy thirty dollars worth of food, he give me back three hundred dollars, yeah, exactly, and take care of me. So yeah, that my scout was like that too. I had to go get like Chick Fil A, and uh, I'll just end up doing it every single time. And you know they would always give me a little extra, uh, just for the time that I did. And uh, I think one thing about the NBA now is uh, it's a brotherhood, man. Yeah, like we we all competing with each other. Of course, we're competing uh, for spots, competing for contracts, competing for it's our lives. You know, at the end right. of the day, but. I feel like the, the the older guys in the league have been taking care of the younger guys a lot more, and they've been kind of taking them under the wing and helping them because at the end of the day, bro, it's hard. It's yeah, hard. no, you it's know, tough. It's, it's, it's hard. It's to a be, grind. It's hard to be as good as you can. You could work every single day, and uh, you could still sometimes not be playing, not be in rotation, not be playing Thanks. as much as you want or not being as, as big of a role as you want, but you have to stay the course yeah. and, uh, you know, be the best version of yourself you can possibly be. No, that's facts. Uh, what do you think some of your favorite NBA arenas to play in as far as, like, crowds and atmosphere? 
not like obviously not Philly. I like the yeah. atmosphere in Philly a lot. No, yeah, Philly Philly's different for sure. Um, I'm about to say Toronto, probably like number one mm. because they be sold out every game. They sold out every game, but like the history between Philly and Toronto with ah, Kawhi shot. Yeah, with so Kawhi it's Kawhi like shot. when we go over there, like they can't stand Joel. Right. So like we just played them in the playoffs, and it's funny because the Toronto like. They they hate us, but they like they 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 enjoy hoop. They enjoy right. good basketball. Yeah. So like their fans, they boo us every single time we come out there. They boo like I remember we played in the playoffs last year and we played the first two games in Philly, and I had you know solid games. And I went over there and every time I touched the ball, I'm getting booed. So right. it's like my first time starting the playoffs, I'm getting booed. And I go home and call my mom. I'm like, I didn't even do anything. Nah, to these no people. Care. Like they just they they're so mean to me. And then another story I got. Like, this is funny. I ordered food. Cause I don't want to go out, so I order yeah. food, and I under, you know, you under, I order under an alias. Yeah. So I go down there to get my food, and the dude who's bringing me my food, he's like, "This is for you," and I was like, "Uh, yeah." He's like, "My wife hates you." I was like, "Dang, I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I'm just doing my job. Man. I ain't nah, even, no care. They ain't even like that." But I think Toronto. Then you could say the Garden, of course. Yeah. I played there uh, at Kentucky, and then my first college collegiate yeah. game. Yeah. Oh, there. I remember that game. Yeah, it the was game there. Was tight. So that that game, uh, that that arena is great. And then uh, I feel like the United Center, just because uh, they play like the the music from Michael Jordan. When I ain't gonna lie, that that'd be lit though. Yeah. yeah when they lit. do that little intro, yeah, you get chills. Yeah. So that I think those are the three that I can that I can say are my favorites to play in. No, nah, that's nah, that's true. <laughs> Who you think is the biggest trash talker in the league? Oh my goodness, um, Pat Bev, baby. Oh, he yeah. gonna talk a he lot of trash all yeah, the he, time. He um, I see, and I, and see, I, I love Pat Bev as a person. Yeah. Like he's actually a really cool guy. Mm -hmm, he is. And like, but like, it's like when he gets it, like if he hits like even like two or three shots, like it's loud. Bro, he don't even got hit no shots. Like he was <laughs> he was guarding James Jay's Jay's first game in Philly, and he was like. Guard on pressure, like, I'm going to take your ball, Jay. I'm going to take your ball. Man. And then, like, the ball goes out of bounds. It was still our ball. He grabs the ball and walks to the bench, like, I told you I was going to take his ball. Nah, I'm he, like, bro, it's still our ball. We we played them this year, and he hit the first three shots of the game. And it he talked. He, that's the only points he scored for the rest of the game. Yeah, and was, I think we won, too. Yeah, he gonna and he hear. was talking the whole game. Nah. Yeah, he going to let you hear it. He going to let you hear it for it's sure. It's some underrated ones, though, like uh, – I feel like Joel talk a lot of trash, but he get under your skin. Yeah. He get under your skin yeah. because he knows how to troll. He know how to troll. Like, yeah. um, he Mo Wagner on my team, he talk a lot. He talk a lot, nah, too. Nah, he talk too much. He talks a lot. <laughs> but I love it. It's, it's Mo Wagner's like one of those players like you would like hate to play against, yeah. but like love to play with. Yeah. George Niang talk a lot on my team. Oh, yeah. He talk, too. And, uh, but no, it's great, though. You know, It's, it's competitive, and it's fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it brings the best out of people, I think, and that's another thing that... I feel like there's some text that's been given out this year that, like, yeah. it'd be, like, fun trash talking, yeah. and, like, refs don't understand that. Like, it's really, like, competitive. Yeah, and then at the end of the day, like, you know, we're grown men, so, like, that the ego and the competitive nature, it right. kicks in. It kicks in, so it's been great, though. you probably noticed there are strange tall boys in the bottled water section of your local stores. Well, it's not actually beer. It's actually water, and it's called Liquid Death. I know what you're asking. Why is it called Liquid Death? Because the water will brutally murder your thirst. And their infinitely recyclable cans are helping to bring death to plastic bottles, which aren't actually recyclable. They just get sent to landfills, even if you put them in your recycling bin. And the best part, they donate a portion of profits from every can sold to help kill plastic pollution. And there's merch. Liquid Death also actually has a hat that I wear a lot of the times. It has like this cool little chainsaw thing on it. It's a trucker hat. I wear it a lot. They work with artists on limited edition drops from the Severed Hand Candle. They collabed with Martha Stewart to my personal favorite, the pink oversized vintage wash sweatshirt that I probably wear way too much. And all the Young Person Basketball Podcast listeners get 20% off their first Liquid Death apparel purchase. Available exclusively at liquiddeath.com forward slash young. Again, that's liquiddeath.com forward slash young. In case you're wondering, you can find Liquid Death Mountain Water on Amazon or at a retailer near you. Now getting off of like the subject of basketball, um, as far as like the team group chat, everybody got the team group chat. Like who replies all the time or who sends stuff first? Who like never? Like, you know, you don't hear from him in the group chat. Uh, I feel like Joel's always in the group chat saying something. Nah, Joel don't really talk really? much in the group chat. Nah, he, but he'll 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 you know he'll troll sometimes. He'll like make jokes. But in our group chat, we got Daniel House Jr. and Montrez <laughs> Harrell. 
and and kind of PJ Tucker. So those three are they they always responded in the group. They're chat. always they always respond. They always gonna have something to say. And uh, no, they they good dudes though, man. They good dudes. And George yeah. is gonna have something to say all the time. He gonna try to make the group chat laugh. George will put something in there that nobody responds to. Then we get to shoot around. He's like, so no one saw what I put so, in the chat. Yeah, so nobody go. <laughs> so nobody, nobody gonna say nothing. He's like, man, George, you, we, you talk all the time. That's how man. we do Mo Bamba. We made it a pact uh, for the rest of the year. If he ever says anything in the group chat, we're never responding. <laughs> More yeah. crazy. He just, he just he trolls all the time. Like yeah. he's sort of like that Joel. Like he just trolls all the time. That's and why they're friends. Yeah, that's why they're friends, and, yeah. we're, and we're tired of it. Um, no, nah, that's that's funny. Uh, as far as like IG and Twitter, like how do you like do you do you follow a bunch of people back that you don't know, or you just keep it to who you know for real? I try to keep it to the people that I know, or the yeah. people that I have in a certain type of friendships or relationships with. Yeah. But uh, you know, some people it's just like. Like I, I follow this one soccer player that I don't I forgot his name, yeah. but he's really good. And like, he followed me, and I was like, Man, I know a lot of soccer players, but I do not be knowing their names. Yeah, though. I don't know. I only his know name. two. To, nah, I know three: Messi, Ronaldo, and Mbappe. Yeah, I I, I know them, but like I don't know these people's name. And I was watching them, you know, while I was hurt during the World Cup, and it's just like, dang, like this dude's really right. good, but. I don't really know who he is. Right. Like, it's cool to see, like, I follow people like the New Balance people now. Yeah. You know, different professions. It's cool to see, like, uh, the different content that they post. And yeah. Like, it's Talk cool. about that, New yeah. Balance. You yeah, just, I, just sign with New Balance. Yeah. So what's that like? It's been a blessing, dog. It's been a blessing. Like, I'll say this. Like, they have really taken care of me as far as, like, I'm, I'm a big, like, shoe guy. Like, I just love to have different hoop shoes all, right. all the time. And uh, I like to have, like, my own stuff. And, like, being in the NBA, it's it's – it's crazy because I never wanted to wear like somebody's shoe. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I was a big Kyrie fan growing up and yeah. I used to wear Kyrie's. Facts. But when I got to the league, I was like, man, I can't wear a Kyrie's shoe yeah. playing in the East. It was like weird. So like now they just like New Balance has been great, man. They send me a whole bunch of different PEs and my own stuff. Right. Um, they take care of me. Then you got guys lean on like Zach Levine, DeJounte Murray, Jamal yeah. Murray. And um, it's been great. It's a great partnership. They've they've really helped me do a lot of different things with the community already. So Yeah. Uh, and then going to kind of like finances, what's the f- biggest person, like the first big purchase you made like once you got drafted? Like what's, what were you like, man, always when I get drafted, this is what I want to get? So, I mean, I, I didn't – it's funny because it was, it was during COVID. So I really yeah. didn't know what was like. Yeah, that was you wild. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know – I didn't have an idea how long I was going to be in the league if the league was going to get shut down. Right. I was kind of scared. I was so scared, yeah, though. Yeah, I was kind of scared. I remember scared. sitting at the crib, bro, like, and they kept pushing it back months yeah. and months, and I'm like – Oh. Yeah, so I was scared. So, like, I didn't really do anything big. I know I um, I got my mom a car. Uh, I got her a car that she wanted. And then I got myself a car. But, like, that was really it. Like, after that, I, I moved into my right. spot. And you know, my uncle lived with me. I did get a dog. And I, I got what a dog. What kind of dog you got? I got a cane Corso. And I call, okay. you know, I call my dog my son. So like, Oh, yeah, you always be posting your yeah, dog all the time. My, yeah, that's my son. So I, I invest. You know, money in him, but he, you know, he's great. But I haven't done that yet. You know, I'm just, I'm just waiting, trying to be patient and, and yeah. see where this takes me. You know, facts. And then uh, obviously, you were talking about the connection that you made in Philly. So, like, investing money. How, yeah. Speak on that. Like, do you think that's good for, especially young guys that are like coming up into the NBA and like, you know, they want the, the chains, they yeah. want the house, they want the cars. Like, talk about kind of like the investing side of like your money and, and how to, how to let your money work for you. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's hard because um, growing up, uh, how do I explain this? We didn't. You don't have that. You don't have that. You're, right. you're working. You're focused on your grades. You're focused on um, how you gonna get bas- better in basketball. You're not really. A lot of people. Some people focus on like some families focus on how to show their kids how to invest. Right. And like we're trying to focus on how to survive. How yeah. Do what I feel do. like it's different though. Like yeah. our generation of like high school guys were right. kind of like the last cutoff right. from like high school guys just being all about social media, yeah. all about, like, right, we right. were just, like, literally just hooping, hooping to try to get yeah, to the NBA. That's it. That's like, what, we just wanted to hoop. That's what I'm saying. At the so, end of the day. So now when you when you get here, you got to find ways to let your money work for you, like you just said. Yeah. And uh, me, like, my first couple of years, I was extremely scared. I was extremely scared to invest in anything because – I like to open my account to see and see, you know, my money in there. Right. Yeah, and, uh, me too. That's my mom has been on me, you know, the financial advisors have been on me about it. And it's like um, I'm slowly starting to get into it. And now I've been yeah. getting those meetings with the finance people, with the accountants, with the with the investors and, and looking at stuff that I want to invest in, that right. I want to put my money in and see my money grow and work for itself. So no. you got to be you got to it got to be 50 50. You got to yeah. be scared. You got to be scared. But you also got to be able to open up and, and let yourself uh Try to let your money work for yourself. Yeah. And, like, obviously with 
us being in the, a spotlight of being in the NBA, uh, just say like after like a big night, after a rough night, like are you looking at IG comments? You looking at Twitter comments? Like I know I've had my fair share right. of times where I'm like, oh, damn, like right. I'm looking like, but then like I feel like as far as like I've, I've grown in the league, I've I've stopped looking just just at everything. Uh so me, um, I use it to, I use it to humble to humble myself. You know what I mean? Like right. um, after a big night, most of the time I don't really look because it's. Being in Philly, it's a big market, right? And uh, you know, it's gonna be advertised more. It's gonna be on the the ESPNs. I I don't watch ESPN. I don't allow people to watch ESPN in my house. My uh. pops, my pops come in. He try to watch ESPN. My uncle know I, that we. As soon as I walk in, we got to turn it off. You got to turn it off because y'all. I mean, y'all on ESPN every day. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we you know we under the spotlight. We got the big fella. We got a former MVP and we got you know MVP candidate. Yeah. So we're we're on there every day. So, but I do I do look at it sometimes at the bad games just to like just to laugh and you know get get my mind off of it but it don't really bother me man it's you know they're fans at the end of the day yeah and it's they're everybody's entitled to their own um, own opinion but i think what, what a lot of people don't understand is uh you know we're humans and we have feelings and we have emotions too yeah. and it's not like we go out there and we try to stink it up yeah you know nah, what I'm i ain't trying to shoot for i don't be getting that you know what i'm saying i ain't yeah. trying to shoot like y'all really think eight. i went out here tonight in the basketball game and tried to go three for eleven yeah like, like, you think i wanted to miss that many shots yeah i ain't trying to go for i ain't trying to miss that free throw that yeah. you know what i'm saying i shoot 85 i ain't trying to miss two free throws but uh that's what a lot of people don't understand and they feel like we're invincible no nah, and, yeah. and we're not and we're not i have i have feelings i have emotions um you know, and I tell my mom all the time, you know, that that sometimes it gets to me, but you have to be able to push through it. Yeah. That's why we're professionals, I think, at the end of the day. And that's why, you know, we get to perform at the highest level. Yeah. Uh, what's the wildest comment or, like, something you've read on social media about yourself? Like, it could be, like, true, untrue. Like, you just looked and you were like, what is this person talking about? I've I seen someone say, like, Tyrese, never had a, has, had, Tyrese has never had a bad day in his life. <laughs> and I'm like... Who? How do you know that? Like, I, I do smile a lot. You smile a lot. I though. smile a lot, and but, I and I. But do you've it. been like, but you've been like that yeah, forever, though. Like, I, I can attest that you've been like that forever. Yeah, you've always it's, smiled. And it it's like you don't know if I had a bad day, right. or not, man. Like, like I've had I've had a lot of bad days in my life, but you know, I I have this thing that uh that I live by, and it's like if I'm having a bad day, I don't want anybody to know. I don't want anybody to right. to my my energy to affect your energy. You know yeah, you saying? don't bring like, nobody else down. Yeah, just you know. I would never want to bring anybody else down. So that is why I smile a lot. It is, it's normally genuine. You know, right. I'm a happy person. I'm blessed to be where I am. So Another thing I've seen, um, Dr. J, uh, he compared you to, obviously, sixth or great Allen Iverson. So talk a little bit about that. Like, what does that mean to be compared to AI and by Dr. J? Right, right. It's, uh, I mean, that's just... That's respect. I, you know, all you can do is appreciate that. Right. And uh, you know, it's funny. Like everybody talks about like the energy that I bring and like the 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 enjoyment that I, I try to bring to the fans. Right. And uh, just talking to to AI, you know, I call him OG. And every time he sees me, he just he tells me like, man, you you gonna be the one. You are gonna be the one. You can do it. You can do this. And uh, the faith that he has in me right. is. It's man, it's just it's a it's a feeling that you that just feels like no other. Nah, like, yeah, for like sure. Like you say, he's a great man. He's a great. He's just he won the best one. He's like Hall of Famer. He's one yeah. of those ones. At the end of the day, you know, he led the team to to the finals, and that you know that was a, a right. tough team to lead to the finals. They, they were great, but what he was doing, and he got a game off the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like to for for Dr. J to say that, and for them to be around, and, and for the city to to kind of um, corral behind me. Yeah. And uh, kind of get like that is very true. Yeah. I don't know, like so. I think like probably say like from the rookie year, we could, there was no fans. Yeah, obviously, yeah. when I when I came to Philly, and like last year, like you would see like Tyrese Maxi jerseys in there, but yeah. like this year, yeah. it's like I I got kids behind me, straight zero. I'm yeah. thinking like they are gonna wear Embiid, Harden, yeah, but yeah. like now nah, you really like the fans really appreciate your your enjoyment that you bring right. to the game in such a city where like you know, everything's yeah. pressured, everything's hard, and it's like, yeah. relax, like, yeah. we're good. I think I think the biggest thing that the fans and I have in common is, like, uh, we had to work for everything we got. Right. Like, I'm not I'm not sitting here saying, like, you know, I had this just hard life, but what I'm saying is, like, I didn't have, you didn't either, I didn't have a dad that grew up in the league, like, that yeah. played in the league or was, you know, I didn't have that type of spotlight. Facts. I had to create that on my own. Yeah. You had to create that on your own. You mm -hmm. had to work extremely hard to be the best version of yourself. And you had to, to put your name out there. You had yeah. to do that by being successful. So it's like, I worked so hard to get to where I am today. Yeah. And Philly fans, they work so hard to get the tickets that they have. Like, right. Yeah. They're not just these 
rich all like rich people they just yeah. work they work the behinds off work the tails off to get these tickets to come to the game to it's see definitely this. a different feeling when you go to different arenas with yeah. the courtside people yeah. you can kind of tell like the the whoever's in court time, you can you can kind of tell like they don't grind it for them yeah, seats. Yeah, they work for them seats, man. Yeah. They work extremely hard for whatever business they're doing, whatever field of work that they're in. They worked hard. They work from the ground up, and it's like I think that's where that connection comes in. That yeah. um, I'm not the tallest guy. I'm not the most athletic guy. I had to work on certain skills uh, to get to where I am, and you know I just really appreciate that, man. They've been great. They've been great to to me and great to our team as a whole. Meditation. I've seen you got into meditation. How do you feel like that helps your everyday life and also like in, in basketball? Meditation for me, it releases pressure. Right. It releases pressure. And it's like uh, I talked about it, planning this big market, planning. I, like think about it. Like, you know, we had the Ben Simmons situation my rookie year. You right. know, Ben leaves or Ben holds out. And I have to slide like right into that, yeah. you know, starting point guard role after the Ben Simmons era. And it's like. We that's still a, that's have a wild time, by the yeah. Way. We still wild have time. championship aspirations. We still got Joel and B, who's who's you know MVP. So I got to find a way to get him the ball. I still got to find ways to be myself. I got Tobias Harris, Seth Curry, and like um, for the first like five or six games of my, of my sophomore year, I was like in a in a in a crazy place because I didn't know what they wanted from me. I didn't know how to be myself. I didn't know how to please everybody and still please myself. Right. So I started doing this thing where like. Before the game, I, I I didn't get on no social media. I only talked to my mom like right before the game. I call her, you know, I call like I go to shoot around. I get home, I call my mom, talk to her, get that out of the way, and then now it's just for the rest of the day until the game day. It's it's me, my uncle, and, and my dog. That's it. I'm yeah. not talking to anybody. I go to my room. I turn off all the lights. I don't have to go to sleep all the time, but right. I just get off my phone, get off social media, and just relax. And uh, that really helped me last year. That really helped me last year. This year has been a lot better because I came into training camp knowing my role. Right. I came in knowing what I was going to be, what I had to do. And uh, it's been a lot easier on me. And uh, I think that's how the meditation really helped me as far as, like, getting back to being myself and having fun with the game. No, nah, facts. Um, no, that's, that's, that's lit. Um, and, and then going into, I guess, like, this kind of this, this dating aspect, like, how, is it hard to date when you get, like when someone can look up Tyree Max's salary, or is it hard to date when you don't know a girl's intentions because you're right. in the NBA? Like, how is that? Right. I mean, it's different, man. It's different. Everybody is tied to their own opinion about it. Yeah. Um, it is hard. It's hard. I wouldn't even just say to date. It's hard to 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 get friends. And, yeah. And not, build, not even just date. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to get friends and, and build relationships with people because of who you are. And like you said, the internet is. It's it's a it's a crazy place it's now, a sick man. Place. Yeah, it's a crazy place, man. People, I, I'll say this: people can hide behind that screen and say whatever they want to say, and, and put whatever face they want to put on, and whatever body, whatever you know, and they can change themselves. Right. And and you can't. I mean, you basically yeah, can't you change can, yourself. Everyone you know knows everything. Everybody knows who you are. Yeah. Everybody can, like you said, Google you, look up your salary, look up how much you make, look up. Um, where you live, and it's it's just a scary time, man. It's a scary yeah. time, so you just gotta be careful. I try to be as careful as I can, man. I lean on, um, keep my circle real tight, man. Yeah. Like you know, my friends, like you know, Chris, you know them, yeah. uh, all my homies that I went to with school went with, to KJ school, and yeah. MJ, and uh, those that's my that's my group. Yeah, man. that's really your group. That's yeah. my that's it. I haven't. I mean, honestly, like I really, I talk to my teammates, but outside yeah. of that. I, Probably just talk to Jalen every day. Yeah, that's what I'm that's saying. You, you know, know that's, we grew up with these guys. You keep that group, and you keep that that the family, and you keep it like close knit to where. I'm not saying you don't let anybody in, right. but you gotta make sure you let in the right people. That's true. Now we're gonna get into this game uh, I got for you. It's called uh, RFDB. It's red flag or deal breaker. So I'm just gonna read out a scenario, and you tell me if that's a red flag or if it's a deal breaker. Like basically, red flag. Like all right, it's a red flag, but I can deal with it. Okay, but. If it's a deal breaker, it's a deal breaker. Okay. All right. When a person can't keep secrets. Deal breaker. deal breaker. I can't be telling you stuff and you just going out here telling everybody else, man. All their friends are single. I'm going to say it's a red flag. I, I mean, say, yeah. it depends on, you know, everybody, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I say it's a red flag, too. Yeah, right. especially That's not now. deal breaker. It's, yeah, it's definitely it's a red, red flag. flag. Like, All right. They go to Miami over three times a year. Oh, my. Uh, that may be a deal breaker. That's a deal breaker. That may be. You can't be. All right. Not that's three enough. times a year. Yeah, that's enough. They edit their appearance on their IG posts. Deal breaker. Deal breaker. Deal, Deal breaker. breaker. Okay, okay. What do you mean by that though? Like you saying like a filter or are you saying like they're they're editing the photo all together as Yeah, far see as... that's kind of that's kind of broad. Yeah. I would probably say like 
the filter. Oh, I mean, I'm fine with the filter. Filter's cool. Okay, but then if they're editing like their actual appearance. You can't be doing that. Not I, 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 don't, I can't trust that. Uh, Snapchat is their primary form of communication. Deal breaker. <laughs> at this, at Why this, you day, say that? at this day and age, this is deal breaker. I, I, I don't, I don't have Snapchat anymore. So like, I, I mean, I just feel like I need I'm getting to get rid old. of mine too. Huh? I, just, I need to get rid of mine. I've been too. on like that's when like in high school I was doing streaks and different things like oh, that. Okay. I, I'm, that's over with. They snore when they sleep. I, that, that's not even a red flag. I think I may snore. I snore be too. Tired. That's not a red flag. Yeah, I, I, mean, I snore bad. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be tired. Oh, I ain't got no choice. They need captions on for every show. I'm gonna say red flag. I don't. I have I don't, to use captions. You I use can't the cap hear. on every yeah. show. On every single thing. No, I, watch. I mean, I like my regular TV too. Like if I'm just scrolling the channels. It has so if to be you watching the game, you got the captions on. It has to be captions. Oh my god, I cannot no. hear. Oh anything. lord, no, no chance. They ask you to share the location with them. That's a deal breaker. That's a deal breaker. Depends on the, it, it. Depends on it. Depends on the person. Yeah. Like depends. if it's my like my family. Yeah. Like, okay. Like you yeah. want me to make sure I'm safe, but like I don't know why. I, I ain't gonna lie. Like I, like Chris and them, they have my location. Yeah. Like my best friends. Yeah. yeah. They, they have my location. Yeah. Uh, my mom, I have their location, so that's not bad. They let their dog lick them in the mouth. <laughs> that ain't it. You just said that ain't it. Dog, I love my dog to death. I love he can't, he can't know, lick you in the... Nah. Lick, yeah. He barely can put his nose on my face. So that's a deal breaker. Yeah, that's a deal breaker. Like, he can't yeah. be letting the dog lick you in the mouth. Nah, nah, nah. They respond to text hours and hours later. I can't get mad at that. I can't either. Because I, exactly I, right. I, don't, I, can't, I don't respond that fast sometimes. Sometimes you be busy. Yeah. As long as you give me an explanation, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. They got an Android. That's deal breaker. <laughs> Beat it. You don't want to <laughs> Beat it. Beat it. Scram, kid. And no, we don't need, we're not doing Androids around here. I don't want to see green messages. They pour the milk in the bowl before the cereal. Wait, do I do that? That may be a deal breaker. The milk in the bowl before the cereal. No, no, no. I pour the cereal. Nah, yeah, that's weird. That's, why are you doing that? Yeah. Now you don't got, that's not the right ratio. That's like, that's like putting the peanut butter in jail. You know what I'm saying? It's just, no. Nah, that's deal breaker. They don't pay attention when they pick them, when you pick the movie. That's actually, I want to talk about that. That is my biggest pet peeve ever in, in life. If I tell you that I'll, we're going to watch a movie and I put the movie on and you are like half paying you put attention. It on for a reason. Like, no, you're not about to just half pay yeah, attention. Like, I put this, this on movie. for a reason. You're about to watch every single second of this movie. And if you don't, I'm upset. I agree with that. I have to agree with that. But in, in, in their defense, if they put on a movie I don't like, I'm going to let them know. So, like, I'm like, man, I don't like this movie. They got all guy friends. The girl. I'm sure they got all guy friends. Like not even like, like just like a couple girlfriends, but like they hang out with like dumb guys. You gotta have some type of female friends, I think. Yeah. I think. I mean, yeah. Nah. You, yeah. I don't think you have all guys. I think you have some type. You have to have maybe two or three, like a group. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I understand having male friends though. That's cool. But yeah. Like, that's that's cool. But all, all guy, guy friends. All guy that's friends. crazy. That yeah. may be a deal. Breaker. All right. There we go. Tyrese Maxey. <laughs> nah, Red dope. flag or deal breaker. That was dope. I like that one. That uh, was a good one. All right, guys. That's a wrap for the Young Person Basketball Podcast with RJ Hampton. I appreciate you, my guy, Tyrese Maxey, for coming out yes, and sir. doing this while uh, we're here in Philly. Uh, here in Philly right now, 1-0. Um, hopefully can get a win on, to put that in on Wednesday. Uh, hopefully we can get a win on Wednesday. No, I appreciate you having me, man. You didn't have to put that in there, though. It's okay. <laughs> we're going to get y'all back for that one. <laughs> appreciate you, my guy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.